Hi everybody, my name is Ivan Krnić. I am head of Java and enterprise content management practice at Cross. Cross is a Fresco partner from Croatia. I have some years in, of experience in building enterprise Java applications. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about our experience in guiding clients from community to enterprise edition. Uh, it's just a little something that we like to call stepping stones in, in business development. So, as you all know, clients come in different, in different flavors. They have their unique needs, unique technical landscapes, unique budgets. Uh, they do or do not have internal IT support. They do or do not have existing enterprise content management in place. Uh, they have or haven't heard about Alfresco. All in all, it's a very complicated world. And precisely because of this diversity, it's very hard to devise one unique and, uh, and pro, uh, Alfresco growing strategy. So uh, customers usually uh, do not exactly know what they need. And uh, left to their own devices, they will probably generate a growing strategy like this one to the left. And what is our mission is to turn that complicated strategy into child's play. Uh, so let me show you steps of our Alfresco growing strategy. Uh, it should be here. Yes, there are three starting points. Either client has existing ECM in place, or client doesn't have existing ECM in place, or it ha or already has heard about Alfresco and decided to try community edition. No matter what the starting point is, our final goal is to reach here, fully grown Alfresco system. Let's examine each of these steps in more details, and you can follow the strategy in the upper right corner right now. So if Exist in existing landscape, if existing ECM is already in place, what you should do is offer strong arguments in favor of Alfresco, like this one here. And you should offer to do a pilot. Suggest a pilot. Let's let the client know that Alfresco is, really works. Uh, once you do a pilot, you are in coexisting landscape. In coexisting landscape, there are two ECMs in place. What you should do is select one of the functionalities and pilot that functionality and migrate it to Alfresco. That will take you to a migrating landscape. In migrating landscape, you have both systems in place. And here you should point out Alfresco scalability features. And one thing, you should point out the price of coexistence of two ECM systems in place. And the next logical step is to migrate full to Alfresco. And that will take you to growing landscape, where Alfresco is the only system in place, right where you want to be. Let's go back to the second starting point, the second path, where you have growing landscape. So there is no ECM system here. And what you should do in growing landscape is build awareness. Why DMS? Why records management? Why BPM? You should select one of the segments here and do a pilot of just that one segment. That will take you to pilot landscape. In pilot landscape, we have just proven that Alfresco works on this little segment. And the next logical step is, OK, let's implement full. Let's implement also business process management and records management. And that will take you again to the, to the growing landscape. The third starting point is community, uh, community landscape. You should point out here that there is no cluster, no support, no connectors. Basically, client is on his own. The only logical step to do here is to upgrade to subscription version. So you go back to the, to the, grow, to the growing landscape. Uh, very easy. Zoom out. Let's see the big picture. So you have three starting points, existing landscape, greenfield landscape, and community landscape. But there is only one single end goal, and that's growing landscape, fully grown Alfresco system. Uh, so what now? What when you reach growing landscape? Are there any steps beyond growing landscape? Can you do anything else for you and your client? Well, the good news is yes, there are steps beyond growing landscape. As you can see now, there are two more steps. Uh, one is enterprise landscape. You can really go enterprise with the system. And the second one is so-called final stage. So how do you reach enterprise landscape? You reach it by upgrading to enterprise edition. And with that, your client gets uh, better SLA. It gets clustering, better performance. In other words, the system becomes more resilient, more error prone. It becomes enterprise fully. So what can you do once you go enterprise? You can focus on services. So once you have a fully grown enterprise system, you can focus on your services in consulting, training, education, implementation. And with fully grown system and your services, you can really earn final client's trust. And this is the final stage. So as you can see, growing strategy can be managed. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's a series of steps. There are three starting points, one intermediate point, and one ending point, and definitely can be, uh, definitely can be managed. 
Growing strategy, on the other hand, doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, they say it takes 12 steps to, re to cure alcoholism. Our strategy has only nine steps. So it's less than 12, but nevertheless, it's a very serious strategy, so you should consider it. And uh, growing strategy, it can really be simple. So once again, three starting points, one intermediate goal, and one final goal. So that is my point. Uh, it's really easy to go enterprise. So go enterprise and reach your client's final trust. Thank you. I think I can wait a bit. Okay, good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Oksana, and I work for Alfresco Technology Partner ITD Systems Company. We develop Alvex solution, and today I want to discuss with you ways to, project man um, to manage projects using Alfresco software. Analysts say that every project can be described ahead of time. How do you think, can we describe such a project before it will be started? So, is it possible to define a workflow for such a project? Uh, in the beginning of a uh, knowledge-intensive, um, unpredictable project, we know only approximate milest milestones and cannot draw the full business process diagram. Um, Let's um, take some more real-life example. Uh, let's say opening representative office in another country. It includes many unpredictable tasks and a lot of unstructured data. Uh, how do we usually manage such projects? Uh, usually we try to draw the full business process diagram ahead of time, or project manager tries to keep in mind all interactions and tasks and uh, doesn't use any project manage management tool. Um, other better ways, adaptive case management best practices uh, say us that we can use project data as a focal point, not workflow. And processes can be determined at runtime after the, pro uh, the project will be started. How can Alfresca help us with this? Question. We can use Alfresco share sites to store all project data, and we can use activity uh, for to start workflows. So we summarized all our experience in this topic and developed Alvex 2.0 solution uh, that introduces uh, uh, project sites. Project site aggregates all information project manager needs to manage such a project. Let's go deeper. Um, workflows. Team member responsible for the some project stage just can start as many related workflows attached to the project as he needs. Uh, so when you open the site, you can see uh, what workflows, what tasks already overdue, and um, who is responsible for this problem. Uh, Every project contains a heap of unstructured files and documents uh, that should be shared between team members. So we can use the default Alfresco document library for this task. Um, you can attach um, hundreds of workflows to the project. Uh, so just looking at current tasks um, will not help us to understand the status of the whole project. So project manager needs such a task list um, to understand the status. Uh, conversations. Team members communicate a lot with each other and with external contacts. We need a place to store all conf calls, information, text messages, emails, uh, not to be out of sync of the project. Um, of course, we have manager of the project or engineer in the project, and we need custom roles for team members to give them access to different components of the project site. List of external participants, external contacts, um, help us when we need to find phone number or email of partner, subcontractor, or customer. 
So, Alfresco is really good solution to, for managing such knowledge-intensive, unpredictable projects. We cannot drive, we cannot create Gantt chart, and we don't need it because it's we don't need it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, uh, Alvex solution that we developed is a pack of extensions for Alfresco, and uh, we introduce now these project sites that can help you while managing such projects. Let's see how it works in real life. Uh, it's a sample of a project. As you can see, team members need something to store, to share with each other a heap of information and tasks, and project manager just need uh, some um, status of the whole project. Uh, we just today released Alvex 2.0 version that introduces these features. Uh, so it's of course it's not completed. Uh, we have some plans to what we will implement in next Alvex versions. You can see it on screen. Uh, your help is appreciated. Uh, the project is hosted on GitHub. You will see the link soon. Um, you can join development, it will be great, or you can just download and use Alvex following the first link. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm ready to reply or your, answer your questions during the break. Thank you. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Uh, OK. Moment, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm half, half. OK. Let me start. Uh, hola, amigos. Uh, I am much the working at a company called InfoSign in Tokyo, Japan. I have been working as a CMS consultant for over 10 years. And today I'm going to uh, introduce a use case using Alfresco at a very traditional Japanese company. Before starting, uh, I want you to review your geographic uh, knowledge. Did you know? Japan is located just like this. Um, did you know that? <laughs> in Japan, we have almost everything, such as Mount Fuji, Pokemon, Bell Train, and great foods, sushi. As you know, or, or you may not. Come on. And we have many natural disasters, um, as well as the worst nuclear power plant accident. Our government should have used Alfresco to manage uh, condensation plant documents, something like that. But we have, there is one exception. We didn't have robust, reliable, easy to use, out of the box, uh, ECMS product at reasonable cost. And I will tell you the name of the product. It's Alfresk. Not that term. Not shop. Something like that. OK. Let me tell you, briefly summarize the Japanese ECMS market trend. From the point of view of record management, the market is almost saturated. And from the point of view of knowledge management, I think it is still very hot, in my humble opinion. I'm going to show you the case study uh, at a company called Uchida. That is very traditional Japanese company, which sells uh, office uh, design and facility management. And the sales division of the company decided to move, relocate it. And it turned out the office was much smaller, the new office was much smaller than before. So they needed a good document management system to save their space. Here are the requirements that the manager wanted me. And the uh, issue was time, as is often the case, just two months to start the uh, service. 
And I found, uh, fortunately, found this product, Alfresco, and the manager likes the share user interface. Before Alfresco, without, uh, without Alfresco, the office was a bit chaotic and uh, with tons of paper documents, as you see. After Alfresco, the office became less chaotic and you see, uh, the, they have the more smarter way of working because they can share what? What's going on? Okay, and here is the digital enterprise digital signage that show the uh, office doc uh, open documents stored in Alfresco uh, with the pro it's called Susong. So uh, this is the idea of Beyond Search. You know, uh, here are the ideas Beyond Search. People can, sorry, it goes too fast. This is the uh, uh, circulation of the flow and the stock. The, st the uh, document stored into the uh, enterprise essence called Yama are uh, automatically transferred into Alfresco and vice versa. And together with the enterprise digital signage, uh, people can share the knowledge for, for marketing. Oh. And this is the uh, marketing automation uh, that the sales division are targeting, are going to challenge next. And this is uh, as, uh, contains always the king in this kind of system. Uh, sorry, uh, it's go too soon. The main topic is over. Let me uh, advertise our service. Uh, this year we became a Japanese uh, training service provider. Oh, thank you. Muchas gracias. It goes too soon. That's me. <laughs> uh, Sabina, I'm uh, responsible for Alfresco Workdesk Consulting and uh, for the solution template. Uh, th this is a part of my presentation now. Um, Alfresco Workdesk, hope everybody has heard about this. We had some sessions today in the room uh, on the other side uh, where uh, some of my colleagues showed you some interesting things about Alfresco Workdesk. If you uh, did not get in one of these sessions, you are welcome to go to the booth and learn more about Alfresco Workdesk. Okay, I want to speak now about the contract management solution template. What the hell is that? <laughs> contract management first. Um, contract management is a business case, nothing else. It's, it's, it's a typical use case in every business and uh, we have chosen this as a first sample to implement our solution template approach. Um, contract management, why contract management? Of course, it's obvious. Um, this is a really typical application uh, for Alfresco customers. Contracts typically are paper documents and uh, contracts are everywhere, in any industry, everywhere. Um, so let's me, let me focus more on the topic of solution template. What's behind solution template? Um, thinking about solutions. I think it's obvious a solution is something we have out of the box. Yeah. You install it and you have it. It's, it's running out of the box after installation. Uh, looking more on the template approach, that's something that is configurable, maybe extensible here. 
Um, but uh, we, we find a yes, another challenge there, uh, building a generic approach. And at the end of my presentation, you will understand what's meant by generic approach and why we have to use contract management for this. You have 15 seconds to solve this. <laughs> solution, that's clear. So, so, solution is uh, in the up right corner here. Solution. What's meant by solution? As I told you, what we have with a contract management solution template, it's a ready-to-use solution, which is standard uh, standardized, delivered with Alfresco Workdesk. Mm -hmm. This means uh, if you buy Alfresco Workdesk, if you install Alfresco Workdesk, you get an out-of-the-box sample for sales and procurement contracts, which is directly available after install. This can be directly used by your business. And the heart of everything is the so-called contract template. This is nothing else than a pattern uh, for specific for, for customer-specific contracts. And uh, in our solution template, we have predefined contract templates available. And it's up to the business user. The business user decides uh, whether he will use the contract template or not, whether, he, yeah, whether the contract template as, uh, in our offering is ready to use for him. He leave it as it is, or he selects useful data, defines old fol own folder structures, and defines his own contract templates here. And that's really new. Business user defines contract templates. Templates. So far, the business user. The business user is very flexible in configuration of the solution template here. But template is much more. And configurability means that beneath that what the business user does, there is a lot of more functionality to configure. Um, there might be uh, company-specific processes, contract types, contract data fields, um, in addition to what the business user does. The administrator can add own business roles, add own uh, data fields, and so on and so on. There's much more flexibility. And uh, finally, um, as a sample, typically a contract management solution um, needs to be integrated in an existing infrastructure. There are well-defined integration points to build your adapters to a third-party environment. That's meant by template here in this case. Extensible also by IT. Um, going back to uh, the triangle I've shown in the be beginning, the generic approach, this means this is reusable. This is really reusable. And the contract is not only a single document, no. The contract, the idea behind the contract is to have a case, a case. A contract is the same as a case. And this is really reusable. Understanding a case is nothing else than a bracket and a collection of information here. Uh -huh. And um, this might be data, this might be documents, this might be reports, workflows, folder structures, links, linked object, whatever. And this idea is really a generic approach. We can reuse not only for contracts, but also for other approaches. And keep in mind, uh, generic is also the idea that the business user, the business user is able to configure as much as possible in the solution. Okay. If you are interested in more details, feel free to contact me or somebody else of my team. Uh, we are outside at the booth. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. All right, so my name is Frederick, Frederick Henrys. I'm uh, an ECM consultant for Amplexor, which is a uh, Alfresco uh, service integ in, uh, integrator. And today I will be presenting a, a business case, a business case we did for an oil company. And uh, for them, we built a, a custom extranet and a custom iPad application um, to, to have there are documents offline on an iPad and a custom extranet application based on uh, Alfresco Share. So about 60 years ago, the company was founded in Belgium, and it was a company um, who, were, who was uh, blending lubricants for the automotive, uh, uh, um, 
uh, industrial and uh, agricultural uh, industries. And nowadays, they have around 120 distributors worldwide, having a total amount of uh, 1,200 sales representatives uh, in the world. And that brings the need to them to have the sharing their content and sharing everything, all the information about their products in a more structural way than they did uh, right now. And the concept behind this is a simple document flow, whether they have an oil company delivering and sharing documents with distributors, and you have distributors sharing documents with sales representatives. The distributors are using the extranet, and the sales representatives are using the iPad to have their documents available offline. Uh, on the road. And the old company can also push the documents direct, directly on the iPad um, for their sales representatives. For the extranet, how does it look like? They need an integrated document repository. They need a responsive UI for mobile resolutions. They, it needs to be branded. They, it has to be available in 10 specific languages. And it also has to act as a sharing platform so the distributors can distribute the content on the iPad. Simply to say, share was not an option here. It, it was, Alfresco share was the back end, but we have to build a custom application for them so it's simple and meet all those requirements. And this is a screenshot of the extranet. You see a breadcrumb in top, you see folders, you see files. For each file, uh, you have previews, you got metadata of the documents. And what is worth mentioning here is that all the metadata and the titles, for instance, for the documents are translatable. So if you log in as a French user or a Spanish user, you will see those documents or the labels of the documents also in your specific language. When you click on a document, uh, a preview opens of the document and you can download the document or if you got specific rights for certain folders you can also upload document. That brings a very very simple user interface to our um, distributors so they can upload documents via their extranet. For the iPad the story is a little bit different and why is that? Because the documents have to be able, uh, they have to be on the iPad. So when the iPad is online it should sync all the documents and download all the documents they need, but it also needs to be uh, an offline viewer for documents, so they, uh, the sales representatives also have the documents available on their iPad when they go to a client. I have some screenshots uh, of the iPad application too, and this is what it looked like. When you log in on the iPad, you see the same branded kind of user, user interface. You see the documents. You can add bookmarks to folders, so you can organize the folders from the document repository in your own bookmark folders. If you go to a client, you can add notes to documents. And when you click on a document, uh, it checks whether it's, if you're online, it checks, you, do you have the latest version? No, you download it. If you're offline, it just shows it at this. Um, you got settings, additional settings for the iPad, so you can have multiple languages for the, uh, for the application, or you can do a full sync when you have a good internet connection. You can do a full sync and just download the whole repository on your iPad, and you're good to go. Some facts about the development we did. We, we managed to do this in about like with five people in six weeks' time, which is very short. And the reason why we could do this is because we used Twitter Bootstrap um, as a, a, a front-end um, uh, technology for the extranet and the uh, iPad SDK uh, for the which which all Fresco delivers. For the future, what what is still needed in this application? We need taxonomy viewers. What is a taxonomy viewer? Well, 90% of the documents on the iPad and the extranet are the same, but they need to be displayed in a different way. So we're going to use hierarchical taxonomies, tag our documents with taxonomies, and build taxonomy viewers. A separate one for the iPad, a separate one for the extranet. Another thing they need is document filtering. Distributors have a selection of documents, and another distributor has another selection. And these informations are, are, are most of the time stored in a, a back-end ERP system or a CRN system, so we have to synchronize between those systems to get some kind of filtering, so when they're logging on the iPad, they only see the documents they have. So this, is, this concludes my talk. It was very short. To, to show this business case. But if you want to see the, app, the iPad application, I have it with me. Come, feel free, and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll show it to you. Thank you.
Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Lores. I'm a colleague of Frederick, also working at Amplexor. We are a Belgian uh, Alfresco Gold partner. And so I will share with you a different story, a different business case we did for a different customer. Actually, um, it was uh, an implementation we did for a social service center of one of the biggest cities in Belgium, the city of Ghent. And uh, we organized their so-called social case files. Now, uh, social service centers, they provide welfare support to citizens in need. And for each of these clients, they actually they keep social case files with forums, contracts, etc. And the way they used to manage these case files up till 2012 was this. This is an actual picture how they worked. They were managing like 500 meters of paper case files at that point. Um, what made the situation worse was that social offices were spread throughout the city of Ghent. In total, there were 40 of these offices, and so 10 people would be full-time involved in the physical transport of these uh, paper case files between those different locations. Uh, you can see the issues there. Now, to give you some idea on the numbers, we were talking about 600 social workers. Uh, they were managing 12,000 active social case files for a total of 4.3 million documents at that time. As I said, 500 meter of paper files. Now, the paper-based way of working was no longer viable because of cost, cost of storage, cost of physical transfer, of course. Also, information security was an issue there because paper would often get lost. And finally, uh, most importantly, also the uh, performance was a problem because uh, often social workers had to wait days up till some weeks before they received actually the requested files. So that's when we came in together with Alfresco, and the aim of the project was actually simple, digitize information and make sure that people can collaborate uh, with the case files as such. And it actually it consisted of three major pillars of the project. Uh, first, an integration with an existing database system, which already contained the case metadata. Then second, the implementation of a digital mailroom to feed these social cases with new documents. And finally, also case management uh, for the social case itself. For the integration, we set up a real-time synchronization using West, uh, REST web services. Uh, and so in Alfresco, we would offer a read-only view on the case metadata and enhance it with document management and workflow capabilities. Then for the digital mailroom, a central scanning infrastructure was set up with Kofax software. And actually, each of the social workers uh, ha now has a personal mailbox in Alfresco Share where he can consult and process the scanned, digitized uh, mail items. This is such a personal mailbox. We implemented this using Google Web Toolkit. This is great. And so if you click a certain item in this uh, mailbox, you get a preview, editable uh, metadata, and also the actions, for example, for assigning this document to a specific social case file. And what is also nice is that you can actually go forward and backward with the buttons through the list so you can process the complete list without leaving this overlay screen. Now, for the case management solution itself, we implemented this in Alfresco Share because, well, Workdesk was not available at the time. And we offer social workers like a 360 degree view on the case itself, on the metadata, on documents, workflows, etc. And we also build in some advanced content management features, for example, the automated history logging, but also auto triggering of workflow. For example, if a uh, medical report comes in, it will automatically be assigned to the doctor uh, via a workflow, which is auto triggered at that point. Now, I have a screencast now of this 360 degree view. Uh, this is the case 1000, and you see this is the 360 degree view with the documents on the left top, the documents for the social case files. We have reminders you can set. For example, if a client still has to submit a, a certain form in three months, we will put on a reminder. This is the metadata which is synced in from the existing database system. And you have some actions there. For example, here, the automated history log, which shows you who did what and when to this specific social case file. Now, if I click a certain document within the social case file, it opens the well-known details view for documents. But also, we added some specific actions there. For example, the possibility to send the document as an email attachment uh, from within the system, because there's a lot of uh, communication with lawyers, clients, etc. And also, at this level, you have a history log automated uh, for uh, having the actions locked at the document level. Now. 
this was a big project actually with a big impact for the customer and they have been using this application successfully uh, since the beginning of this year. Apart from the cost of course and the security issue, the major um, benefit to have is a much faster surface because now they can access the documents in seconds whereas before it was uh, days or even weeks in certain cases. What did we learn as an uh, implementation partner? Well. This was also a big project for us. It is a business critical project also, and we were able to deliver it successfully with uh, our fresco. So this boosted our confidence in the platform as such. Of course, there were some bumps in the road. First of all, we did a lot of front-end customization as you saw in Alfresco share. This is hard to do and also hard to upgrade. I think we all know that. Then IMI performance also gave us some issues there and we uh, ended up with a two-step approach. So first from Outlook, the email would go to the personal mailbox you saw, and then from the personal mailbox, it would be assigned in a second step to a specific file. Finally, also we had to fiddle a lot with the default settings for document previews to get actually acceptable previews, both in terms of accuracy and performance. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, please contact me later. Can you hear? Ah, oh, there it goes. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the level of presentation so far. So cross my fingers that I don't ruin things. But uh, so I'm Richard Esplin. Uh, I spend most of my time doing community technology with Jeff Potts, helping with a lot of the developer properties. The last six months, though, all I've done is Summit. So that's the way it goes. It's been a good day to see things coming together. So uh, today, we're going to talk about finding a language pack. Now, the easiest language pack to use I guess I'm a little ahead of time, but uh, you know the easiest language pack to use is the one that's in the product. So getting various languages in Share, all you have to do is change your, your content language in your web browser, and Share picks that up. There's 11 supported languages. A couple are new in 4.2, and the official list is in the documentation here. But not everything's localized. Uh, there's some random strings that, well, Web Quick Start's not localized. It's an open source project. You can you can do that yourself if you'd like uh, as you adapt it to your needs. But there's strings that originate in the SharePoint protocol and LibreOffice and in error messages that aren't localized. Um, and then uh, records management and work desk localization is under, underway. So that's coming. Uh, if you're, if, so if the officially supported language packs aren't enough for you, uh, CrowdIn is the place to find the community language packs. You can see Oksana's picture up there. Uh, she helped us set this up. Here's the Vietnamese translation. Uh, Crowdin is a great place to participate, to work on a localization. It's kind of hard to get the strings out to work with. Uh, so it's, it's the next place to go to find out the status of a language. Now, once a Crowdin project is to a certain point, uh, you can ask Oksana and she'll friendly add it to her script. Uh, so community-translations.alfresco.org uh, redirects to her site. And these are in jars. They're not nice amps but for, for long-term uh, project management, but they are good to drop into your shared libraries folder to test and to work with that translation before it's, uh, as it's going through the process. Uh, some of these are only 2 or 3% done. Others are almost complete. Not every, pro not every translation project uses CrowdIn. Uh, if you want to find an active project that's not on CrowdIn, the place to go is addons.alfresco.com. Uh, you want to look at the component type language pack. Uh, or you can do a search for language, and they'll come up. Uh, there's a number of country-specific ones, like British English and Welsh, uh, Portugal Portuguese. And some of these have made it into the product, like Russian and, and Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, CrowdIn only supports the most recent version of strings. And so when you want to have older stuff that you can maintain, you need a project hosted somewhere else. So that's the life cycle I recommend. If you have a language you want supported, uh, or you want to build an add-on, start in CrowdIn, build that community, then request to have it added as a package one on, on community translations. Then create a maintained project so you can have multiple versions. A list that on add-ons. And once you have enough customers that it makes sense, you know, there's a business case there, then Alfresco will consider adding it to the product. Important tools to know. We've already talked about CrowdIn. There is a mailing list that translators use at Google Groups. And eventually, you probably want a project hosting site like GitHub or Google Code that has source control and issue tracker, specific instructions relevant to your language. 
You'll need a text editor to, to edit and do QA on your strings. And there's a, a GitHub project, a, an engineer's side project to put together a bunch of tools called Alfresco Localization Tools to help in this process. Uh, some tips that are valuable. Oh, sorry, let's add a new language to crowd in. So you want a new language? First thing is go into crowd in, register as a user, and do a message to the Alfresco project administrators. Oksana, I get that, and Oksana helps out by, by setting that language up. It's a two-step process. We first set up the language, and then you have to ask us again to get added. And then we'll add you to the language, make you a manager, and then you can approve other people to join. You can give some people proofreader position, permissions and other people uh, translator permissions, uh, vote on strings, do the whole process. So first tip, share does, is not UTF-8. Uh, it's Java-style encoding. That's ASCII with escape strings. It does not play well with most translations tools. So there's a tool in the Java program called native to ascii that comes with the JDK, and that'll translate it from whatever you know, Java-style encodings to whatever your platform is, usually UTF-8. A work desk, however, is UTF-8. Oh, and you need to translate back before you check back into to source control. Uh, another important thing is that your custom content models, you can translate the titles and descriptions. That's useful for, for your for um, for specific customizations. Important gotchas, there are, if you, if you need country specific language pack, do a country specific language pack. Otherwise, keep it neutral. Uh, there's a bunch of programming mumbo jumbo you want to avoid mucking with in your translations. Uh, we already, and the files in crowd in, they do not have the locale suffix. So if you pull strings right out of crowd in, you need to add that suffix. And there's scripts to do that, like Oksana script. Important resources, of course, we talked about the main list. There's also an IRC channel. This is not translation specific. It's on free node pound alfresco. A bunch of us hang out here. There are a bunch of IRC people here now. Uh, we hope you join us. And last June, Oksana and I and uh, Gloria and some of our team uh, did a Tech Talk Live, and that's on YouTube. You can read this five minute presentation is that one hour compressed down. Uh, two important wiki pages, language pack development and community translations. I've made sure both of these pages are up to date. So if you want to know more, that's a great next place to check. So thank you. Well, that one is Hello everybody. So I'm the Alfresco team manager in Inead Concepts. So we are a French gold partner of Alfresco. And today we'll talk about our application developed on iPhone using the SDK uh, from iOS to, to develop our application that helps us to interact and collaborate directly to an Alfresco repository and instance. So we use the, the Alfresco iOS SDK, so we were the very first on the battlefield, and we worked a lot with the Alfresco mobile team situated in Maidenhead with Mac Dubrasson's team. So it was a 10 month project with 10 different actors. So it was really a R&D project. So don't, don't be sure that it won't be the case if it was a client. What was the concept? So the, con the context is that we, were, we have employees and they work on mobile. So they work with tablets, with iPhones. And they really want to collaborate and share, but they do it uh, with cloud platform like Dropbox or Google Drive. And they really want to use personal folders and personal documents. And having access to these documents offline, so it means that you've got businessmen that are traveling all the time. They don't have every time the network. So they, they really want to be able to work offline. On the other side, you've got the IT. And the IT is always saying, 
okay, you have to use the corporate application. I don't want you to use Dropbox because it's out of control of the IT. And what do we provide? We provide an application that is a kind of compromise between uh, IT and employees that is focused on document as well as on users and that enables also social collaboration. So these are some key functionalities. So it was developed on iPhone, so it means that we use the iPhone to structure and to read the documents. So we really make a big focus on the collaborator view. And we were able to import uh, any document from your mailbox, from your Google Drive, directly to an Afresco repository, and to manage personal folders, like in the version 4.2. In technical background, so we use the uh, uh, the Alfresco SDK uh, using Simaya School. We worked a lot on the on the interface with the, uh, things like Twitter and Facebook fr fragments, and we worked also a lot on on the speed of the application in order not to be blocked to wait to to be to have call on the internet to have, to access the document. So here is a, a video of the application. So. So oh, sorry. It's okay. So here is the login page. So we are directly working on the Alfresco instance that is in production. So you, you see the activity feeds. So here is a right panel, like in Facebook, with the quick actions. Then you can manage a favorite site. Then you go on your site, you've got three components. You've got contents, members, and activities. If you go to members, you are allowed to, to send an email directly to that collaborator, and you are also able to, say, to call him directly from the application. Then you can, we can directly access to our personal folders, like, for example, my files. And we will go directly to a document. So here is a document, and we will see all the actions that we can make. So we can make this document as favorite. We can like the documents. We can comment the document. For example, this is great document. So I say, OK, that's great chart. I can download it to access it offline. And I can read the information, so all version of this document. And I've got quick action, like in Twitter. So you sweep. And you can rename. You can trash the document. You can do exactly the same thing on folders. So for example, add it as favorite as you can see here. So you will see now that in download, you can see your documents that are downloaded. So here is quick action. You can take a picture, upload a picture from the, your library. You, can, you are able to make search. So that made immediate search, and you can access directly to the document from the search. <coughs> You've got access to the repository and the dictionary, for example, if you want to work uh, that way. And we have top menu actions. So documents and folder as favorite. And this is an example of how to use the application, uh, sending an attachment directly to the, to the application. So I've opened an, an attachment. And next, I will open my application, brought the Alfresco repository, and upload it directly uh, in, the, in the file. <laughs> so what's next? So I will, I will, we are searching for clients to, for making multilingual a solution to make document sync, multi-accounts. So we, we can do everything in a short amount of time. And this application will be free at the end of the month. So please uh, don't hesitate to, to test it. Thank you very much.